Hey guys, and welcome to my Out of the Park Baseball 21 series with the Oakland Athletics. This is episode five. Uh, we are at the end of the regular season, and we made the playoffs, guys. We uh, on the last day of the season, a seven to three, twelve inning victory over the 103 win Red Sox has given us a place in the American League wild card game. So before we take a, that, take a look at that, let's look at the standings. We'll look at our team, and then we'll get to it. As you can see, Red Sox finished 103-59, and best record in baseball. Astros, 102 wins. They won the AL West. Tigers make it to the playoffs at 81-81, and as the East and the West were very, very good, and the Central was not. Wild card teams both out of the West, the Angels and us. Over in the East, the Miami Marlins win the National League East with a 78 and 84 mark. So a 481 winning percentage gets you into the playoffs in the National League. Uh, Cubs win the Central at 95 and 67. Giants win the West 101 and 61. The Cardinals and the D backs make the postseason as your wild cards. Um. And one of the things we talked about at the beginning of the season was some of the records that were um, close to falling. And looks like uh, Barry Bonds has at least one more season as the home run champ. We give this a second to load. See, Mr. Bellinger had, I don't even want to say he had a bad season. You'll see, you know, he still put up almost a seven war, but I think he was injured for part of the season. And he came up short. He's, I want to say, about 15 home runs short of seven. What is it, 762 or whatever Bonds is at right now? Uh, where are we right here? Yeah, 762 Barry Bonds. Bellinger sits at 746. Played 141 games, so I guess he wasn't hurt that much. 141 games, 31 home runs, 72 knocked in. Uh, still put up a six-win season. Uh, so my guess is he'll break that next season. Um, and then there are a couple other players who are uh, on pace to catch Bonds as well. Um, Matt Olson, who plays for the Dodgers now, Gliber Torres, uh, who is still a Yankee after all this time, and I think there was one more player. Let's look. No, that's it. Bellinger, Torres, and Olson. Uh, Harper hit 700, but he had a really bad season with us and with Atlanta. Uh, Jordan Alvarez. Uh, put up another 40 home run season, but only hit 239, so I think he's on his way down. Raphael Devers, uh, up to 600 home runs. Juan Soto, at age 33, already has 600 home runs. Um, so Eloy Jimenez, up to 590 home runs. So a lot of home runs in this save. All right, so let's take a look at our team stats. You can see we finished, again, 91-71. and 71, Good for third place in the West. Um, overall stats, offensively, we had a pretty good year. We were in the, the upper half in, in pretty much every offensive category except for home runs. Pitching staff, we were very good again. Very good starters. Bullpen was, was just okay. Um, but overall, uh, we were in the top half of just about everything, and that leads you to a 90-win season. So let's start with our offense. Two players with five war, Chris Russell and Herb Blanche. Russell with a really, really nice second season. Increased his numbers across the board uh, while playing a very, very good defense. Put up 5.3 war out of the catcher spot. You're not going to beat that. Herb, Herb Blanche, 61 doubles on the year. Power was a bit down from last season. Um, average was up. Slugging percentage was up, but he just didn't hit as many home runs. He was good for five war. Uh, also played very, very good defense. Um, but he's going to look to get paid next year, and we have a young prospect in the wings, so we'll have to see what happens there. Alex DeHoyos, um, really surprising season. I wasn't expecting three war and an 800 OPS, but that's what we got. Um, he was fantastic, uh, and he's a captain, so uh, solid pickup there for us from the Red Sox. Manny Rajo, a three war as well. Um, again, not expected out of the second base position, but maybe our second base position is 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 okay. You know, maybe we can we can deal with this if we plug in some power and he continues to play defense at uh, you know plus level and you know hits almost fifty doubles. So we'll just have to see 
have to see there, but that's three straight years of, of at least 40 doubles for him. So, I mean, this is what he is, right? Uh, Joey Van Luke is, is another one I'm not sure about. Three war, 24 home runs, 53 doubles, led the team in RBIs, but his arbitration number was close to 10 million. And I don't know that we can afford that. I mean, he's probably worth it, but I don't know that we can afford it. So that's something we'll have to keep in mind when the season ends. Gaspari Siapara, um, can't really hit a lick, but defensively he's very, very good as well. So we are really solid up the middle defensively with Russell, De Hoyos, Siapara, and Araujo. Uh, Mario Guevara was, I mean, look at these numbers, man. He played in 58 games, had 157 at-bats, hit 16 home runs, knocked in 41 runs, uh, slugged 726, and had almost an 1,100 OPS. So he did exactly what we wanted him to do, which was mash left-handers. Um, I mean, he hit. I guess he even hit even better against right-handers, but um, he, he was perfect in that role for us. So um, I'll take it. You know, he can't field, but, you know, in that DH spot against lefties, he's perfect. Uh, Jose Valdez didn't play quite as many games this season, um, but the average went up. Slugging was down, uh, so his OPS was down from last season. But, um, you know, again, a pretty solid bat. I mean, he's probably replaceable if we can find a, a better hitting first baseman. But, I mean, he's not bad for for, for a team like us. Uh, Jorge Vega was the young outfielder we got from Milwaukee midway through the season, and we plugged him into the leadoff role. And he was fine. I mean, he only hit 250, but he put up a 375 on base percentage, 835 OPS. So, um yeah, he's going to be pretty solid as our as our leadoff hitter going forward. Andy Chilton, we called up at the trade deadline. Uh, he hit 290 with an 853 OPS, showed some power. Um, there's going to be a battle for that right field position next season. Uh, and then Gutierrez and Tanner. Uh, Gutierrez actually had a nice season. We picked him up right at the end of the regular se- or end of the um, spring training because we needed a backup middle infielder and. And he was good, man. I mean, he, you know, you can't ask for more than that. So uh, he was solid. Uh, and then Sergio Rodriguez hit a lot of home runs, uh, but his average was was pretty light. I mean, he only hit 208 for us, but he's one of the few legit power bats we have in, in on our team. So And he's a captain, so he'll hang around. Uh, pitching. Um, our 1-2 of Andre and, and Zabel are as good as anybody else in, in the majors. Uh, Zabel won 18 games in his first season for us. Uh, 200 innings, put up a 4.6 WAR. Uh, was a very, very good, uh, you know, a whip of just about one. Same thing with Andre. His his record wasn't nearly as good at, at 11 and 10, but struck out more than a batter in inning. Posted a lower ERA, uh, lower FIP, better strikeouts per nine. I mean, he was probably the better pitcher of the two, but the records don't indicate that. Uh, Wilcher and Springer as our three four, uh, almost identical seasons, same record, uh, within five innings of each other. Um, you know, uh, Wiltshire put up 2.9 war, Springer put up 2.3. So 1, 2, 3, 4 were pretty solid there. Uh, we did lose uh, Carcamo or Carcamo for the rest of the season, and I don't know what I'm going to do with him. And it's something we'll deal with in the off season. but he's potentially somebody that we could look to move as well. He's got some value and hasn't really developed as a starter like I would like, and I've got some other players that I can plug into that number five spot like... Mario Busquets, who came up when Carcamo got hurt and did pretty well. Two and three with a three eight one ERA. Uh, his FIP was three six four. You know, and he put up almost one and a half WAR in only ten starts. So uh, we'll take it. Uh, bullpen wise, Osorio had a really really great season for us. His first year as our closer, thirty eight saves, two point nine eight ERA, struck out eighty seven and sixty six point eight seven WHIP. Um, it was really really good. Um, Hai Feng Ji uh, slid into that setup role and was also very, very good. 2.67 ERA, 87 strikeouts and 60 innings. And then everybody else was varying levels of, of okay. I mean, Dempsey in his first year with us struggled at the beginning of the season. Um, only pitched in 41 games, which is a bit surprising. Um, would like to get him some more work next year. His FIP was a lot lower than his ERA, so it looks like he got a little unlucky. Chris Roberts, his first season with us after coming over from Atlanta in the offseason, went 10-2 and two out of the bullpen. Still has a lot of room to grow, so I kind of like him a lot. Uh, Morales, Espinosa, Poppy, and Silguero were 
all half win or lower. Um, they were just okay. So that's kind of where we ended up. Um, it, it sets up nicely as we're going to have Zabel going in the playoff game against uh, the Angels. Let's take a look at the Los Angeles Angels really quickly before we go and, and sim that game. Um, their offense is just ridiculous. Scored almost 1,000 runs, led by Juan Soto, who came over from Washington. We talked a little bit about Soto earlier, and you can see he's 30, 33 years old. He's got 600 home runs, 2,600 hits, he's 121 war. I mean, he's put up four seasons of at least nine war, or one, two, three seasons of at least nine war, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seasons of at least eight war. Led the league in walks like 12 straight seasons. He's fourth all time in bases on balls. I mean, he's just, I mean, that's a career, man. That's that's something. Um, they have the reigning AL MVP and shortstop, uh, Federico Granados, who uh, averages a bit down, but hit another 50 home runs this season. Jordan Walker, 47 home runs. Um, and it's just this offense is just ridiculous. Um, their pitching staff is pretty good. Um, they're above, above, uh, you know, above average. Um, they're going to be going with Joe Simmons in this one game. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but man, this offense is, oh, they got Mookie. That's right. We treated Mookie to them. That's right. Um, so yeah, I mean, their offense is, is, is something else. So, uh, let's go ahead and get to that game and then we'll sim it and we'll either keep simming as we, we go through the playoffs or we will head to the off season. Oh, hang on just a sec. <clears throat> All right, we are back and I screwed up. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get to the game and sim it. I accidentally simmed to the next playoff series. So uh, we lost 5-2. So let's take a look at the box score and see what happens. Uh, we get down early. We get four runs in the first two innings. Um, battled back. Run in the second. Run in the fourth. Uh, they scored a run in the fifth, and that was it. That was all she wrote. Juan Soto with two home runs and three runs knocked in. Nolan Jones hit a solo home run. Russ, it was Guevara and Russell who homered. Um, those were the only guys who really did anything offensively. Uh, Zabel didn't make it out of the second. That's too bad. I was, I, I hoped that that we had the advantage because we had the advantage on the mound that that was going to do it for us, but uh, didn't happen. So, and Jordan Walker got tossed in the first inning, so they lost their number four hitter, and we still couldn't get it done. So, all right, well. You know, in all honesty, I wasn't expecting to make the postseason this this year anyway. Uh, I thought we might have a shot just because our pitching staff was really good, um, but I didn't. I really didn't think it was going to happen. Uh, uh, you know, offensively, we 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 need to be better, uh, and that's something we're going to take a look at. Is is we are going to have some players that we're probably going to have to move on from, uh, just from a, a cost uh, a cost perspective. Um, again, players like Van Luke and Blanche are probably worth what they're asking for. But we can't necessarily afford to pay them that when we have players kind of here waiting to go. And, and we have, we picked them up at the trade deadline, uh, this third baseman, Joe Curry, who's just about ready to, to step in as a, a starting third baseman. Um, Allen's going to be coming up soon, uh, probably next year. And we have a lot of young talent here. Pacheco is somebody who's kind of gone under the radar, but very, very good defensively. Uh, decent power bat. Um, Richie, we picked up in a trade earlier this year, and, and he's kind of our first baseman of the future. I don't know that he's ready yet, but but he's getting there. Um, so we've got some talent, guys, and it's just a matter. And then we've got Bacara down in, in uh, AA, as well as Luna, who is going to be up with us next season. Um so yeah, we've got some talent. It's just a matter of, of figuring out what the, the smartest way is to spend whatever money we have left. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead, and I'm going to sim ahead to the beginning of the offseason, and we'll start offseason number, uh, I guess, offseason number two as general manager of the Oakland Athletics, and we'll, we'll try to get to 2033. So hang tight. We'll be right back. All right. It is the beginning of the offseason. 
Uh, we got a couple small things we got to do. We first thing we need to do is hire a new bench coach. So let's go in and do that. Uh, bu -bu 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 bench coach. And I generally look for somebody who's blue across the across the list. Um, those usually are, are kind of what I'm looking for. So Matt Palmer. I don't want to sign him. I'll sign him to a four year deal. Uh, they just, you know, those are the, the ratings that I like. On-base percentage, offense, power, hitting, and prospects. So um, so that's the good news. The bad news is we have no money. So we are going to have to figure out what we're going to do here. So um, let's take a look. First thing, let's look at the waiver wire because there's always a bunch of players on the waiver wire as soon as the season ends. So all players... I guess there's not a bunch. There's a couple, but nobody of any real significance. So, all right. So salary arbitration. And this is where things are going to get a little funky. So first thing we want to do, we are going to non-tender Mario Camposano. He was good, but we have players coming up who can fill that role for less. Uh, let's go and, and let's make some of these deals that, that are going to be easy to lock down and can save us a ton. Any bit of money in the long run. 875 there. A poppy. We'll give him a million. Ricky Medina. I think we're gonna eat, I think we're gonna try to move him. Let's hang on, hang tight there for a second. Uh, Logan Tanner, we are gonna non-tender. Uh, so that saves another one six. Uh, Wilcher wants two eight, so we can probably get him for two six five. Oh, two seven. And so we save a hundred grand there. Uh, Araujo at three million. I think it's probably okay right now. Save hundred grand there. All right, now we have some decisions. So first things first, let's see if we can move. Actually, let's do this. Let's try to move Carcamo first. I think he probably has a little more value. Uh, let's just start with prospects and see if there's any 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 interest there. If not, we'll move into regulars as well. And um, oop, sorry, just turned my phone on and was playing a video. Um, I was watching the Moran brothers, Colin and the other one's name is Ian. Uh, Colin was a, or the, the one of them was making his major league debut and he was facing his little brother. So I was watching that because baseball and baseball starts in two days. So I'm trying to get as much, I'm trying to get my fill of it at this point. So nobody wants Carcamo for a prospect. So what happens if we go to regulars? Nobody wants Danny Carcamo. That's a little surprising. Um, all right, so that changes things up a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm going to look and see what offers are there for Van Luke and uh, Blanche. Uh, but I'm going to reboot my computer first because it's running really slowly. So I will be right back. All right, sorry about that. We are back um this is a bit concerning uh, nobody wanted carcamo uh which i mean that's that means we're gonna have to move van luke or um blanche and i think blanche probably has more value um as a as a a you know extra base hitting machine who can play really good defense yeah i mean there's absolutely value there. So what are we looking for? We've got a starting pitcher here who's the number 71 prospect. Um, a little bit old, and that's a little concerning. So it's, it's an option. Uh, a couple of pitchers here that are... Well, we just traded Melder to them. Um... Izquierdo, again, a little bit old. 
I'd prefer an offensive prospect or player to a pitcher, but not going to be super picky. Yeah, I guess he doesn't have a ton of value. He's got some, but it's all in relievers, man, and I don't need or want to trade her Blanche for a reliever. Um, I mean, I would trade him for a starter, but that's about it. So what happens if we just go to prospects? Probably going to get all those 24 and 25-year-old pitchers who aren't really prospects, but yeah, like these are not prospects. All right, well, this is a little disappointing. But we will figure something out here, guys. Yeah. All right, well, that sucks. All right, so let's... What if we... What are we getting here? My guess is that the prospects won't be as good. I'm guessing that Blanche is probably valued higher. Bitch, I have a question. Yeah. All right, well, this sucks. Okay. Um, we're going to have to figure something out here. So I got to move Blanche. So how do we want to do this? Let's look at... What do we want? We need offense. <laughs> so we're going to trade two of our best offensive players. So that makes sense. Um, shortstop is a need of ours. Uh, first base. I would say sh if we could pick up a shortstop and a first baseman. So let's do this. Let's go here. Let's go player list. Let's look up first baseman. Let's include some prospects in there. Let's see what we get. Josh Grant's really good, um, but I don't think they're going to trade him to us. He's five stars. We got to aim a little bit lower than that, I think. Okay, this guy's fifteen. Um. Ken Kelly is basically a duplicate of Van Luke. Uh, ooh, this guy's pretty good. Like him. We get him from the Brewers. What will it take? Whoa. Okay. Um. I mean, so let's try this. Let's see if they'll take him for Van Luke straight up. What if I eat all of his salary? It doesn't make any sense. They literally don't want him for free. Okay. Um... What about Blanche? Okay, so that's fine. You guys will be fine. Oh, if I take him. I mean... He's 22. He was in double A. He had him as a reliever in double A. He only throws 89 to 91. Uh... I mean, this kid can hit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, what else can we do here? I want you. I want you. So let's, is there anything we can do to make this happen? So you want Springer. Well, if you want Springer, can we start with... 
Nope. That's not what I wanted. We start with Carcamo. Oh, see, this is bizarre. Okay. Um, that means that we have something. So if we're going to give up, if we're going to get a shortstop, let's put Siapara in there. Still an insult. But it does move the needle a tiny bit. Of course, they still want one of our best players, but it moves the it moves it a little bit. Yeah, I really like this guy. He's only twenty six. He's still making the league minimum, although I think that probably changes soon. This was his first full season. Great defend great defensively. But I don't really want to give up Tolbert. He's only two star, but I, and he's only but he's only twenty two. All right, so let's back up here a little bit. Let's let's see if there's anything else that they want that isn't him. Um, where are we? Dermody or Dermody? Couple of prospects. And moves the needle, but they still want one of our. It, it looks like it's it's it looks like we're not going to have a choice here, and that's okay. I mean, we have we have a bunch of pitching prospects, so I'd be okay with that. He's a lefty. Can hit okay against lefties. I think. This, I mean, he can't play defense, though, at all. Um, all right, let's, let's hang tight for a second. Let's, let's, let's think about this, because I like him, but he's so bad defensively. He's really nothing more than a, a DH, and I've already got four of those, so... Um, Man, they're just there's not a lot left these days, guys. Um let's just see if Pittsburgh will give up Grant. Springer. So what if we start with wherever that pitcher is, Tolbert. Worst offer you've ever seen in your career. All right, well, that's fair, I guess. Um, so what about a shortstop? Can we find a shortstop someplace? Let's take a look at that. Because I don't hate that move for that first baseman. Um, but it just means then we're going to be really, really kind of tied in with, with Valdez and, and Van Luke, who also can't play defense. Um, I'd be fine moving on from both of them and having a bad, one bad defender as opposed to two. But, so let's, let's go back here and let's look at the player list. Let's look at shortstops. All right, so let's include minor leaguers. All right, so what do we got for shortstops here, guys? I, fuck, that's not what I want. Let's customize this a little bit. Fielding at shortstop is at least 60. I'm picky. All right. So this gives us a bit better. He's not bad. I mean, he's got that profile that it seems like every shortstop has right now. He's just a better, better hitting version of what we currently have, which I don't really have any interest in. Um, Vince Harris isn't ready, and I don't necessarily need someone who's ready now. But I mean, could we go after Marin alone? No. The problem is none of our depth is elite depth, so it's all 
like filler. You know what I mean? So they they wouldn't headline any sort of deal. They're they're those extra pieces. Cubs trade him. Yeah, everybody wants one of my uh, one of my starting pitchers, and I'm not prepared to do that. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and sim ahead a day because we're out of days to make offers. All right, so we've simmed ahead a day. And okay, we are back, and um, yeah, this is not going as well as I had anticipated, which is unfortunate. Um, but we'll figure it out, we'll make it work. Uh, if we have to sim ahead to um, free agency and see who's got some money, then we can. Uh, but nobody has any interest in, in some of these players. So we're going to offer them their extensions just to get the contract signed. And then we're going to move forward. And I'll, I'll continue to look. Uh, I think... Um, I've done all of the, I guess, looking on camera that I'm going to do. You know, there's no reason for you guys to sit here with me for, you know, an hour and a half and, and try to find the right deal. So uh, you kind of have an idea of what it is I'm looking for. Man, Blanche doesn't want a lot of money long term. I mean. Is that his contact has started to drop? His contact when the season started was an eighty seven and it's down to a seventy two now. Can't be right. Down to a six. Oof. And that's not a terrible contract, um, but I'm not comfortable doing that. So we'll go one year. At 5.8 and just get it locked down and then we'll see what happens. And then Van Luke. I mean... Do I non-tender Joey Van Luke and see if I can sign him in the off season? I got. I think I do. I think I not. This is crazy, but I think I non-tender him, and because you have to think I'm going to be able to sign him for less than than, than ten million dollars in free agency. It's just a hunch I have. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to take a chance. So that's, I think, it for this section. Like I said, I'm going to continue to mess around and see if I can't figure something out. But if I have to go into the, po if, I, if I have to go into free agency and move on from Valdez, Van Luke, and Blanche, and then take a step backwards next year with some of my young players, then, then that's what I'll do. Um, I've pretty much just made the decision. So uh, our two, three, four hitters are probably all going to be gone next season and, and we're going to go into next season young with uh vega russell allen uh becara uh de hoyos chilton uh, and then we'll we'll figure it out from there so i'm going to go ahead and assume ahead to free agency uh so we'll be back at that point so hang tight all right we are back it is free agency time um, the only move I made was I did end up making that trade with, um, Milwaukee. We sent Tim Tolbert to the Brewers in exchange for Ruben Mendoza. The bat was just too good to pass up. Um, and he's cheap. 
So it uh, looks like he's basically going to be Van Luke with a little more power and a bit better eye. So, uh, and he's only 22. So I, I felt like I had to make the move. So let's just get a scouting report just to make sure we know what we're getting. Uh, haven't looked at free agents yet. Let's take a look at the uh, award winners. A.O. Gold Glove. We had Herb Blanche, who won his second uh, Gold Glove with us. Um, Juan Gonzalez, Reese McGuire, are now of the Astros and 37 years old. Keith Ron Moss, O. Jun Lee, Rodrigo Granados, Eric Doyle, Everson Pereira, and Omar Lopez. Ooh, wow. I like him. Holy crap. <laughs> That is all. That's right. I remember trading for this guy. That's amazing. Uh, NL Gold Gloves, Colby Kubitschek, Antonio Gomez. We're pretty much beyond the days of players that uh, uh, that 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 are familiar. I mean, there are a few people left, but uh, Mario Zavala, the former Oakland Athletic, wins the Gold Glove his first year in Atlanta. Uh, Steve Yeager won the AL uh, Reliever of the Year. Uh, we had Osorio on there, finished sixth, so fifth, fifth, yeah. Uh, Angie, so fifth and sixth. We had five and six there, so that's good. Uh, Chicago Reliever Tadami Shimabukuro uh, won the won a second straight. I think he won it last year as well. American League Silver Sluggers Chris Russell, nice. Devin Cassie, who I would love to bring over from the Red Sox. We got him as a steal from Philadelphia and when we were running that team. Mario Gonzalez of the Red Sox. We got him from the Cubs. Devers, Granado, Granados, Juan Soto, Jared Kalinich, and J.J. Bladé. Uh, and then Eddie Luhan over in the National League. Isaiah Bennett, Bobby LeBlanc, Ken Kelly at first base, Hector Pando, Jim Payne, he was the Rookie of the Year last year. Um, really solid bat there. Tatish Jr., still going strong at 33. Walking Cabrera, Cody Bellinger, and Marco Gonzalez. Wow, 380 as a 23-year-old. AL Rookie of the Year, Milt Owens, 38 home runs at first base for the Orioles. We had the number three. Uh, Alex DeHoyos finished third. Very nice. NL Rookie of the Year, Joe Trombetti, 31 home runs for the Reds. They had one and three, so good for them. Um, Ken Hill, the former, is that the former pitcher, Ken Hill? Uh, it sure is. He was from Lynn, Mass. It's my hometown. Uh, NL Manager of the Year, Brian Orpin. AL Pitcher of the Year, Matt Bailey of the Astros. 17 and 6, 308. Uh, we had 3 and 4 in Andre and Zabel. Like I said, I thought Andre actually had a better season than Zabel did, even though the records didn't indicate that. The voters agreed. Uh, NL Cy Young, Jose Gutierrez, 19 and 3 as a 26 year old. Uh, Garrett Crochet, who just continues to strike everybody in the world out in this save. And then Anthony Mendez, uh, AL rookie or MVP is again Federico Granados. That's two straight seasons that he won the MVP. Uh, not quite as good as he was last year, but still very, very good. Good enough to win two straight MVPs. Juan Soto finished second. Ronald Acuna, now of the Houston Astros and age 34, hit 50 home runs. Uh, Chris Russell was the only one on here for us, way all the way down here in 20th or whatever this is. Uh, NL. MVP Walking Cabrera of the uh, Rockies hit 70 home runs a year ago. Look at that. Four straight seasons of at least 60 home runs for the 32-year-old. He has led the National League in home runs six of the seven years he's been in the big leagues. That Look at the RBIs. That's just nuts. Uh, Raphael Devers filed for free agency. Um, if this was five years ago, I might make a run at him, but he wants $35 million and he's 36, so that will not happen. International free agents, any value here for us? So far, no. It's disappointing. And then the free agent list.
<clears throat> Sorry, I had to sneeze. Oh, we already looked at this free agent list. There's just not much there. The best of the bunch is probably this Josh Alger, and he's a bit of a douchebag. So um, I'm going to stay away from him at $20 million and compensation. So let's go back now and see where do we stand with our finances. Yeah, we got a little bit of money now, which means we can... I mean, we could potentially hold on to Blanche. I don't know that I want to. With his contact dropping, I think now is when he's going to be at his best value. And we have a couple options at third base. Another guy that I really like that we're going to bring up this year is this Juan Mendez. Uh, not a great bat, but very, very good defensively. So between him and uh, Joe Curry, I think we're going to be pretty set at third base. So... Let's take a look and let's see if anything has changed now that we are uh, into free agency and, and potentially that freed up some money for, for some of these teams. Doesn't look like it. In fact, it looks like we have fewer options. Oh, well, no, there are a couple. Hmm. I mean, that serves no purpose. It's making $7 million. Um, power bat, but again, making some money, not really looking to take on money, looking to do the opposite. Ruben Abara, you only have two pitches. And if that change up was even like a 20, I could see making him a starter, but... Not at that, not at when it's as bad as it is. He's really just a two-pitch pitcher. Um, Ian Lewis. Oh, good. Good defend, good defensively, but can't hit. So what if we do this? Does this change anything? No, it sucks, man. Thought for sure there would be more value there for him. I'm not going to trade him for a reliever. If anything, I'll just hang on to him if it means trading him for a reliever. Uh, what about... Car camo. Did anything change with him? Is anybody interested in him now? Surprised that nobody wanted him. That was a bit of a surprise to me. Even with the injury. I mean, he's going to be back in six weeks. I mean, there are some people that want him now, but, I mean, meh. Right? I mean, this is all just trash. Um, that sucks. All right. Uh, is there anybody new on the trading block? There's nobody on the trading block. Okay. Let's look at free agents and see if something snuck through that we didn't notice before. Where's Van Luke? What is he looking for? 7-5. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not really considering it with, with what we have in uh, currently in place. Um, let's go back up here. So we got a closer who wants 10 million. We got... Devers, who's 36. Yohan Moncada. Yeah, I mean, he's on his way out, too. Danny Harlow is a good pitcher. He's injury-prone, though. He's got some really five great pitchers, pitches, but um, really injury-prone. Shane Baz is out for four months. 
And there's just this is just really bad in terms of free agency, and that's too bad. But you know, it is what it is. We'll we'll sort through it. Um, I mean, I suppose I could use another bullpen arm, but I'm not gonna not going to break the bank for one. At least none of these guys. None of these guys to me seem like they're worth it. Uh, TJ Rumfeld, not bad, but again, I already have a thousand first basemen, so. Um, this is going to be an interesting offseason. Uh, so we want to move on from Blanche, and we want to move on from Valdez, both of which have ratings that are going the wrong direction. Um. And we want to start going a little younger. And I'm happy with this outfield here, plus um, plus Josh Allen. Uh, he's still growing. He's probably going to start in, in AAA. Just, he's not quite ready yet. Um, Becara is going to start in AAA as well. Uh, let's see what else did I want to do. I wanted to call up Luna. I think that was it from an offensive perspective. Yeah, Richie's still got some room to grow. Bacara, these guys are all going to start in AAA. Um, I don't really know what to do here. Because uh, I want to move... I mean, I, I'd like to move Blanche and Valdez... But what happens if I try to move them together? Does that change anything at all? Or does the AI just not value Valdez? That's probably going to be the case. But let's add veterans too. Alright, well, this is different. Um... Tamar Johnson making 15-5. I mean, he's put up the numbers. His ratings aren't great, but he's put up the numbers. It's a straight fit, yeah. So it's 15-5 for the next five years, and then a player option. So it's not terrible. Um, he's not great, but it's not terrible. I don't need an outfielder. Bobby Witt is getting up there. His, I mean, he's great defensively, but the... Bat isn't really there anymore. Hugo de la Cruz. I mean, we have that in uh, in in, the, in our our young third baseman. They'll trade me Anthony Mendez, who went sixteen and ten a year ago, making sixteen, making eleven each of the next two years. That's not awful. That would really make our our rotation just elite. Uh, Spino used to be really good. Look at that stuff, man. A hundred a hundred stuff at age thirty one. Sixteen game loser a year ago. Hmm. He's out for another seven to eight months. He's fragile. What's that contract look like? Okay, it jumps up. All right. If he was at 14 for each of those years, I probably would have taken that. Injury and all. So we got catcher, which I don't need. Darren Alcorn, new. No. Sal Stewart. Hmm. It's cheap this year. He hit 38 home runs a year ago. AI doesn't like him quite as much. Defensively, he's not bad. That might be an option. Oreo Vasquez. He's basically the same thing we have in Siapara, just a little better. But, I mean, he's, he, 
his ratings, his stats have been a whole lot better. So I hesitate to say he's just a little bit better. I mean, he's a lot better, but he's in the last year of his contract. Joshua Morrissey. Hmm. Ian, oh, I've already looked at Ian Lewis. He's no good. All right, so what if we, what if we ate Blanche's contract for this year? Does that change anything? Uh, it does, actually. It's a bit of a surprise, but I'll take it. Bobby Carlberg, he's okay. Eddie Luhan. Right, now we're talking. 13, 17, 17. Uh, that's a definite almost possibility. I mean, that feels like a good move. Trading Valdez and Blanche for Eddie Luhan. And then we can figure out what to do with designated hitter and, and those other positions afterwards. I could pick up both of those players. If I could get Luhan and Womack. De La Cruz, I've already looked at him. Already gone through the Cubs offers, although they're now offering Eric Pena in the deal. But again, I don't need an outfielder. Noel V. Marte, who we've had in uh, other saves. Marcelo Meyer. Bad. Chris Cochran. Ooh, two and twelve. Rough season, man. Rough, rough season. Twins want to give up a lot of pitching, which is nice, but I don't really need pitching. I think, guys, the deal with the Orioles is the way to go. He's only twenty-eight. So we'll have him through his age 31 season. AI, but they don't like it at all. But what if we also, can we get that picture? Doubt it, but 24 years old. Not very good deal. All you want, yeah, sure. You want Roman Morales? You can have him. So what if we... Scale back on the money here. How much can we take back? Well, okay. This is looking pretty good. Okay, so we can... They don't want any of the money. Okay, so that's fine. Is there anything wrong with Eddie Lujan? No, great knowledge of the game. He's got a great bat. Slots in to the middle of our lineup. Provides us some power. That's perfect. All right. And we're going to get a, another young 24-year-old uh, pitcher who was bad last year, but ground ball pitcher, good control, good stamina, a um, couple of good pitches. His stuff may never develop, but that's fine. All right. What else can we add to this? Because they need to shave money. Uh, ooh, they have a bad farm system. Okay, that's fine. What about Chris Corwin? Oh, he's the number seven prospect in baseball. They won't throw him in. Dane Burgess, he's the number 61 prospect in baseball. It's unlikely they throw him in. What about Edgar Alvarado? You can never have too many catching prospects. I think this is going to be it. I think we're just going to go ahead and take this deal as is. We're going to pick up Eddie Luhan, who uh, three straight years of at least 30 and 35 and, and 100. Um, 5.1 more last year. He's not as good a defensive third baseman as, as uh, Blanche, nearly as good. Um, but the bat is there, and we have some defensive pieces in place that we can 
can use to cover for him. Robbie Womack, a good prospect first baseman. And in exchange, we're going to give up Herb Blanche, uh, whose ratings are starting to slip, um, but he has led the league in doubles the last two years. He's won two straight gold gloves, so we're absolutely taking a step down defensively, but that's okay. Uh, Jose Valdez, who is going to be replaced at first base um, by the kid we picked up from. Can we remove him from the deal? I would be content with Mendoza and Valdez at first. What would you want in exchange? Okay. Anybody here that I'm just okay getting rid of? No, it looks like it's probably, that's probably the right move, giving up Valdez. That's fine. And then we'll just figure out what to do defensively at first base, kind of late in the game, replacement for Mendoza. All right. Um, so, yeah, so let's go ahead and the fans are not going to like giving up Blanche. That's fine. But they should like picking up Lujan. Let's see what we get. So we get decreases a lot. We get almost crashed. They loved Roman Morales, really. Okay. And Eddie Lujan, we get amazing. All right, so what does that do for our overall fan interest? All right, we're at 78 fan interest. Uh, so we got to increase ticket prices again. I said 10%, so we're going to go 24.50. So that leaves us with less money this year, but more money next year, which is fine because I really don't have any intention of spending any money, um, any money of, of significance here this offseason. Uh, all right, so Womack, I mean, he, he needs to be a starter, I think. Uh, so let's get our scouting report and make sure that he's not some sort of bizarre bust. Um, so what can we use? I mean, our pitching staff is pretty set. Um, our top four, really our top five spots in the bullpen are all pretty set. Osorio, Dempsey, G, Robertson and poppy and then these last three spots can kind of you know they can fight for that those those last three spots lineup wise uh we move luhan in there uh and this isn't necessarily where they're going to bat this is just me plugging people in and then we have that dh spot that we can rotate which is actually perfect because that means we can probably do this um so against righties, so I wanted to call up this other guy. Where was he? Mendez, right. I wanted to call Mendez up, and I think that was it for call-ups. Yeah, uh, Alan Becerra. We've already talked about Alan Becerra and Richie. So um, Mendez is a righty as well. Better against lefties. Curry. So I think what we do is this. I think we plug Curry. I think we do this. So Curry becomes our third baseman. Luhan becomes our DH. That way we hide his glove here a little bit. Um, and then the outfield will be shuffled around a bit between uh, Vega, De Hoyos, uh, Chilton. And, and we'll see because if Allen develops here over or Bacara really develops here over the off season. We may end up calling them up and then moving on from. I mean, I don't know who. I mean, our our off our outfield is going to be pretty stacked at that point. But you know, we're going to hang on to Vega, obviously. Uh, Chilton, we're likely to hang on to because he's just got a great bat and he's kind of flexible. He can play multiple positions. Um, what if we make him first baseman? Those ratings aren't bad. He's actually better than, um, better than than uh, Mendoza, which is good. So, um, but we'll move on from Medina. Obviously, he'll be the first one to go. Uh, but we're gonna have like six really good outfielders, so we're gonna have to figure out what to do there. Uh, but that's a good problem to have. So, uh, yeah, we have a little bit of money. I don't really think I'm gonna. Spend our extension money just plummeted. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, 
probably because we moved Luhan to from designated for assignment onto the roster. That's probably what happened. Uh, so salaries, let's take a look here. Uh, so Carcamo is going to come off the books next year. Uh, we're not going to be able to re-sign him, and that's fine. So we may look to move him this season. Um, we may look to move Osorio, depending on how the season goes. Um, just because he's 30 and he's making $8 million and you know, we've got these four guys who are making a lot of money, deservedly so. Uh, Zabel could opt out of his deal. If he does, you know, I'd probably be fine with that. Um, you know, we can run with Andre and uh, Wilcher and Womack and Busquets and whoever else we have, Springer, as, as our fourth, as our five starters if we have to. Um, yeah, so we are going to have some decisions to make. So I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead now to the Rule 5. I don't think we're going to make any moves. We might see if we can, uh, if we can pick off a couple value free agents as we we get closer to the beginning of the season. Um, but for now, I think we're going to stay out of free agency and and we're going to sim ahead and and see what the future holds at Rule Five. So uh, I'll be back at the Rule Five draft and we'll talk then. All right, guys, we are back and I actually simmed ahead to uh, opening day. Uh, the Rule 5 was uneventful uh, at best. Uh, there was nothing there, so we just moved on. Uh, so we simmed through um, spring training, and we are at opening day. We did make one signing. Um, really low risk, but relatively high reward. Uh, where is he? Is he still in... He might be in AAA, or he might still be in the... Miners, yeah, he's right here. Got to stick him on the forty man. Franklin Caceres, if you look at him, he's twenty three. I mean, he's a reliever, so it's not you know nothing earth shattering. But he was a free agent. And he was only asking for a minor league deal, only asking for like eight hundred and fifty grand or something like that. So uh, we scooped him up. Hundred mile an hour fastball, uh, extreme ground ball pitcher. Looks like he could be pretty solid. Uh, but other than that. Uh, it's pretty much status quo. You know, once once we made the big deal for Eddie Lujan, we, we pretty much went with what we had. Um, we're projected to, to, you know, make a fair chunk of change more this year than we made last year. Now, there's not a lot of money left for next year, but, um, you know, if we're generating an extra 18% uh, income over the course of the season, then in theory you would think that these numbers would increase as the season goes on as well. So... Uh, we do have some decisions to make. So we got 39 men on the spring training roster at the moment. So let's go ahead and trim that. We'll start with the pitching staff. We're at 17. We got to send four down. Uh, pitching ratings. So we're gonna send Neely down for sure. It's fine. Signate. All right, so it, it, it automatically, it, it, well, I think Espinoza probably goes down. Um, I mean, Busquets, he had a nice season for us last year, but I mean, just from a ratings perspective, he is the weak. Actually, Dermody, I think is probably, yeah, Dermody. He's going to go down. We still got to send down at least one more. And I feel like it's got to be Busquets. Um, I think his contract lets him out. Yeah, if he's not promoted for day 30. So maybe we leave him up for a while and then we send him down. I don't know if that's doable, but we'll see. So Busquets will go down. That gives us 13. Uh, so we are at... 35, so we got to send nine batters down. So Hannah, Richie, Aguirre, Hubbard, Medina. Start with those guys. So I can't send down Hannah. Fine. Care, designate, and designate. All 
All right, so I still, that leaves, I think, what, three I gotta send down? Yeah, ugh. All right, this is gonna be tough. Guevara. I mean, after the year he had last year, I, I can't justify sending him down. Mendez can play third base and right field, which is a weird combination, but he's very, very good defensively, and he had a great year at AAA. Can't justify him staying in the minors. Curry is Curry's our, our starting third baseman. Becerra, he's going to start at AAA. And this is this is the decision is is Josh Allen. He Yeah, I don't think he's ready. How did he do in spring training? Yeah, he had two twenty four. All right, so Josh Allen's gonna start in triple A, which was the plan all along. Um don't wanna rush him. So we're at twenty eight. We gotta send one more player down. Do I go tw I want I think I wanna go twelve pitchers. Um but who do I want to send? I think it's Poppy. Yeah, he wasn't very good last year. He's got a... Okay, he will likely get claimed. So is there any sort of prospect non-40 man that I can get in return for him? No. All right. Well, whatever. It's fine. Designate for assignment. I don't care. All right. So let's set our pitching and our uh, and our lineups. So our opening day starter is going to be Zabel, followed by Andrade. Got to go five man rotation. Zabel, Andrade. Go Springer or Wilcher. I think we go Wilcher. Oops. Gotta switch these guys around here. Andre Wilcher, Springer. And then Womack was significantly better than Carcamo. So Womack gets that five spot. Uh, Osorio is the closer. G is one setup man. Dempsey is the other. Sorio, middle relief. Roberts, middle relief. Caceres, long relief. And Carcamo, the emergency starting pitcher. I think, do we want to go heavy on Silguero? Yeah, I think it's time to let him... He's 27. Let's see what he got. So we'll go use more often there, and we'll see how he does. Sorio's starting to slip a little. So we might end up going back to G if he struggles, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. So lineups. Clear lineups and clear depth charts. And let's set our starting lineup. So batting rating. Who is going to be our leadoff hitter? Jorge Vega. Goes without saying. All right, our number two hitter. So we got we want to go lefty, righty, lefty. So we want to go. Luhan is going to be our number four. Doza is going to be our number three. Going to be our number two hitter. Or maybe not. Maybe. Can we do this? That Curry there. We're going to play Curry at third, and he was going to be our DH. We go Russell in the five hole. All right, so now what do we do? De Hoyos in center.
Rodriguez. Do we go Rodriguez and right, or do we go Chilton? I think we have to go Chilton. Yeah, against righties, we gotta go Chilton. He's just a better hitter. Chilton in right. And then we end up with our middle infielders, Araujo and Siapara. All right, let's see what that does in terms of depth chart. Mendez every sixth game, Chilton and Rodriguez. I don't want to go every second game, but I'd be okay every fourth game. It gets our backup outfielders some play, gives uh, Pacheco and Rodriguez an opportunity to do some stuff, and you know it might give us an opportunity to leave um, leave our guy down in AAA. So let's copy that lineup. Paste, and then we just got to change things around here a bit. So he's going to go out. He's going to come in at third. Going to do a little shifting around here, I think. Run like that. Depth chart. All right, I'm good with that. All right, so now we go against lefties. Paste that lineup. All right, so against lefties, what are we going to do this year? Because I'd like to get Guevara out there because he's so good against lefties, but, again, so bad defensively. It might just not be an option this year. Um, I'd rather get Curry that playing time. I mean, he doesn't really have any split season. He's not particularly better than... Guevara, so we might do this. And I think that makes the most sense. And everybody else is a lefty, so we just got to kind of run with what we have. Um, Mendoza can hit lefties, right? And not as good, so maybe we shift him around. As De Hoyos against lefties. Yeah, let's do this. We'll go righty, righty, righty. I'm not crazy about it, but um, we'll move Chilton down one just to split it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm not crazy about that, but uh, I think we'll be okay. I think we have enough offense at the top of the order to, to make that work. So let's copy that. Let's paste here. Uh, get Guevara out of there. Move the Hoy. We've got to move everybody up one. Hoyos, Lujan, Russell, Mendoza, Araujo, Chilton, and Siapara. All right, so that is our, those are our lineups. Those are our pitching staffs. Uh, let's just go ahead and sort this real quick. See if it did anything we didn't want it to do. Matlock, no, he's fine. He, sh he only had three hits in five games, but they were all home runs. Um, oof, he was a beast. He had 42 home runs last year for us as a 19-year-old. Um, I don't think there's really any other moves. Anybody not in the right right league. We have our, our main guys locked down here in Allen, Becerra, and, and Richie. And I don't know if Richie's ever going to work out. If that contact doesn't improve, he's not going to make it as a first baseman. But, you know, it's fine. Uh, Bacara and Allen, both solid options. Uh, Allen, I just I need this contact to be a little higher. I can deal with everything else where it is, but I need the contact to come up. I need the contact to be at least a 50, I think. Once he hits 50, we'll call him up. He'll be our everyday center fielder, hopefully, for the next decade. Um... Not that I expect this to take that long, but if it does, it does. Um, from a trading perspective, um, you know, if things, are, if we have a rough season, Osorio is a trade option. Zabel is is a trade option, even though he was lights out last year. Um, he could potentially opt out of the contract this year, which I, again I wouldn't hate. He opted out of the contract. I mean, if he won another 16, 17 games and opted out, I would probably be okay with that. Um, frees up some money and allows us to potentially spend it elsewhere. Um, I, you know, I mean, that might be it from from a, the big league roster. Um, 
you know, we could potentially move some of these, you know, three-star players like Rodriguez or, you know, Chilton maybe, um, if Becerra is just absolutely on fire. Although Chilton already is what Becerra could be, and they're the same age, so, you know, maybe it's Becerra that we move. Um, Chilton's better defensively, so we'll just sort of have to see. Um, actually, let's just look. I'm curious. I'd really like to get our get ourselves a shortstop, um, you know, that can hit as well as it can field, or another young starting pitcher. And there, are, you know, there's a couple decent options in here. It looks like, but nothing, nothing earth shattering. So we'll probably just do nothing with him for the time being. We don't need to trade him, so we'll leave him where he is. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I was just looking anyway. Let's go ahead and sim to opening day. Then we'll get out of here, guys. We'll get to the 2033 season. All right, so yeah, Ken Poppy got claimed. That's not a surprise. Season expectations. Oh, he wants us to make the playoffs. Well, that's a problem uh, because if we don't, uh, we could end up losing some money. So hopefully we make the playoffs this year. All right, so we have the number three and number 10 and number nine prospect in all of baseball. That's good. Yep, we just need Allen to come along just a bit, and he will be up. If we look at the minor league systems, we're fourth, and that's because we have two of the top 10. Um, and then from there, it drops down to number 86. So we got to have a decent draft this year in order to, to fix this, but that's okay. If we win, it doesn't matter. Preseason predictions have us finishing 89 and 73. Again, nobody offensively. Zabel, Andre, and Springer uh, on the pitching staff. Let's take a look and see just really quickly who the upcoming free agents are. Are there any, any targets here that might be of interest to us? Garrett Crochet. It's a nice option. You can get him. He's making a ton of money this year, but he might be a, a trade chip. You know, if you, you know, want to, if if we want to pick somebody up at the, at the trade deadline, and yeah, you know, we should have some money at the end of the, at, you know, towards the middle of the season. So that might be an option if Philadelphia is out of it. Uh, Daniel Espino had a really bad season last year. Oh, he, oh, they traded him. A lifelong Cleveland Indian was traded for three prospects in the offseason, and none of them are particularly good. Uh, he is in the last year of his contract. Um, and pretty consistent, you know, what you're going to get out of him. I mean, look, I mean, last year was a down year, but anywhere from two and a half to four war, he's going to strike out 200, and, you know, 200 to 220. Um, so those are two names we'll keep an eye on to see if we can improve our pitching staff as we go down the road. But other than that, it looks like another below average um, free agent class. Matt Olson is probably the star. Uh, but you know he's 39 and, and starting to starting to slow down a bit. Um, let's look just no we know it. so Cody Ballinger is about 15 home runs away. There's three players with 700 so it'll be interesting to see how they do. Um, and I think that's going to just about do it here, guys. We um, are up to opening day on in our 20 in the 2033 season. Uh, when we come back, it'll be the first year player draft. Hopefully we will be competing with Houston and L.A. and in the first play in first place in the AL West. If not, we'll figure out what we got to do. So, um, yeah, guys, as always, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, until we talk again. Everybody take care. Bye-bye now.